As long as you're into something, I will help you achieve those goals, figure them out. And that's kind of my favorite thing to do on Earth all the time, along with my 60 employees who are also doing it like crazy. Welcome to Exploring Mind and Body with Drew Tadia. Drew is an expert in nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. And he wants to help you live a healthier, longer, and more active life. Now here's your host, Drew Tadia. Welcome to another edition of Nationally Syndicated, Exploring Mind and Body. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. We're coming at you with a brand new show. We appreciate whether you're listening on terrestrial radio across the country or as a podcast around the world. We certainly wouldn't be here without you. So stick around. We got all that coming up. This is Exploring Mind and Body. Naturally improve your lifestyle one show at a time with your host, Drew Tadia. All right, so we're live here with Lauren Zane. <laughs> she is a ball of fun. If you didn't know, you will know shortly. Lauren, thanks so much. This is great. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'm really excited. I'm excited to be back. Last time we had you on Exploring Mind and Body as a guest. So I was like, we had such a great interview. That's why we're here. And again, I want to thank you for being here. I Let's go. I'm in. Let's, this is awesome. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Lauren, tell uh, <laughs> our audience, tell our audience who you are. What do you do? I uh, run an executive life coaching education company. So we teach in universities, we go into corporations, and we work with individuals. And um, basically, what we're doing is getting people to design their lives or design their companies or just design anything. Actually intervene and design. And what, what, so designing, how do you mean? Design a life of success? Business, family, all that? Uh, yeah. Design the quality and caliber of your life from the inside, how you talk to yourself, to what you do every minute of the day, that you really are in love with your life, right? So I teach and have developed a method that lets people really dream and uh, be accountable to what they want to be accountable to and learn how to have what I call personal integrity with whatever it is. I don't care what you're into. Honestly, as long as you don't lie about it or hide it, right? So as long as you're into something, I will help you achieve those goals, figure them out. And that's kind of my favorite thing to do on earth all the time, along with my 60 employees who are also doing it like crazy. <laughs> what are the challenges from getting people to find out the direction that they want to go in life? Most challenges happen in the mind, right? So people are born into really a life story, like born in already, right? To their culture, to their financial situation, to their parents, to their parents' sex life. To, like, so people are born into a scene and a half. I have a nickname for that. I call that your goodie bag, right? Just like when you were little and you got a bag, right? You looked in that bag and you're like, ew, what is that? <laughs> right? Like, am I stuck with that? What do I, someone's going to make me throw that little thing out. And then there's good stuff in there, right? But it's your job to figure out what to do with your goodie bag. And that's pretty much where Handel picks up, right? What'd you get? What are you dealing with? And how do we take this and make it an incredible design so that you're fulfilling on the, on your life along with helping the planet and everybody else out to be happy? So give me an example of what would be in a goodie bag that someone would be. Maybe why don't we start with, let's just go with finances because that's the first thing I thought of. Someone opens up their bag Excellent. and their family. Well, what? In debt. I'm a, my family is in debt, buys things they don't need and always is chasing money. And it's always what everybody's fighting about, right? It's really not a happy subject. It's really not a smart subject. It's, and then, you know, the mother thinks they know how to do it better than the father. The father does it the way he does it. And it has an experience of domination. And then the kid is a girl, right? And then, you know, doesn't know what to do. And then really just wants to escape, you know, from this context that they raised in money makes fights, right? So then the kid figures out not to fall in love with a career, but to fall in love with how to make money, right? Goes to law school, goes to, like figures out their whole life so that they could stop the fighting in their head, in their life with their parents and in life itself. Yeah, that's how money, can, yeah, that happens. <laughs> that's what happens. That's happening right that's like, now. That, that, so there's, there's family plagues, and then children are a reaction to what they grew up in and they're either solving it 
but feeling at the effect of solving it, not really dreaming about what they want to be or have in their life, but they really just feel an obligation to fix things and then, you know, chase that, but never end up creatively happy. So, you know, I'm constantly intervening in someone's storyline that they don't even know they could change. So what do you, so where do you start? You say you, this is your story and we need to change no. it. How do you change it? Uh-uh. I start by, I break life out into 12 different areas and I ask for your dream, like your vision for the, like for your whole life in that one area, right? So spiritually, what do you think fulfillment in your life in the area of spirituality would be? Money, career, family, sex, love, and romance, right? So I ask for in 12 different areas, your dreams. And what happens is, is everything stops and you start to have to confront the fulfillment of your life. Right. And people may go, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm always engaged in that. But that does not mean you've ever sat down and wrote down separating out exactly what a vision for your life is. So that causes design. Right. I ask you to design your life right in that moment. And then what happens is, is most people write the most absurd dreams. Right. Like they can't stop hating and fixing and like dreaming of something just a little better than they have. Like, it's not a dream. It's a reaction. It's offended. It's the drama itself, right? And so then what happens is, is on our first session, or as you go through the book or inner you, which are my programs, you start to hear that you live in this fishbowl of your own language, and you've never dissected how you talk to yourself or even don't invent bigger than what's in the fishbowl based on your parents, based on, you know, your culture, based on, you know, you don't even know what you think is right or wrong. You think you do. You think you know. But until you start to investigate all of it, um, I'd like to, you know, wonder if you've investigated any of it versus just go along on the same ride you're on making improvements, right, which is very different than stop, start. So that's, is that like the biggest issue is we don't really address, like we don't look like this is what we can do with, this is where we can make change. We just kind of accept our circumstance. Yeah. Because it, you know, when you're young, right, you really are at the effect of whatever your parents think or do, right? The way they make you eat, the way the food they buy from everything you eat to how they spend money to how they are happy with each other to, you know, so there's so much, there's so much already given to you that you have no choice about. We end up being pretty good liars by the time we leave for college or move out of our house, right? (laughs) Kids are wildly talented liars, right? And, And even incredibly talented at figuring out how to keep other people happy instead of themselves, right? Other people off their backs, the teachers, the like. So by the time you walk out of your, into your being a grown up. You are so programmed from your family's history. It's, it's rough. <laughs> Hi, it's rough, isn't it? Like you don't know there's another life available to you and that you're not only subject to what you were born into, right? But you don't even know you were born into exact, like you haven't figured out the language to explain where you came from so that you can invent where you want to go from that goodie bag. Lauren, we had this, this was from, from your group here. It said, find out which areas of your life you made to, you may need to work on with your free coaching tool. And then it says you can take the current reality quiz. Can you tell us about that? So, you know, can, you can imagine that I've been doing this for now 20 years, right? This girl is 48 years old, started in her early twenties in the coaching field. Um, so we've had a lot of fun using all the work we've ever done to create great quizzes, right? To lead the witness, to be able to tell the truth about the area in your life that is hurting you the most that you might be surprised. You you may go, yes, I know exactly what it is, but maybe you don't, right? Or what's number two or three. So we created a reality, you know, like find the area of your life that's most, you know, hurting you. And we ask you a whole bunch of questions. So a current reality quiz is great. And I promise it's really interesting to go on the ride through the quiz. It's, it's, it's not Cosmo because that's a little sexier, but but we're trying. <laughs> so what happens when is this? This is kind of like what you talked about in the pat in the previously here was that this is when we kind of dig deep into what or what areas we can improve in our life. Is that what the quiz is about? The quizzes are our way of getting you to answer 
the area that's hurting you the most. And then because we think that they're all connected, I think everyone knows they're all connected, right? But the way they're all connected um, creates a domino effect, right? If you go after the one area, obviously you're having a lame sex life because you're hating your body, right? Like, so you get, so what's the most important thing to work on so that the, so that you end up happy quickest, right? And so you don't have to work on all 12 areas of your life. As a matter of fact, you fix the two ones that you're slightly avoiding and it actually teaches you everything else in all the other areas. So that's one of the things we've been working on, like leverage for quickest way to the most bang for your buck or most change in your life. Okay. So you learn the most. So yeah. when someone comes to you, I know generalizations are difficult because there's so many different people. Everyone have, has different yeah. types of issues. But if, if you could, could you pinpoint a, a regular question or, or a most frequently, um, most frequent issue that you're addressed with? Is that too generalized? Yeah. The, the most critical shift that I need to give a person is that they are not their inner dialogue. They have an inner dialogue. You are not your inner, you, so people listen to the voices in their head like that is them. Like, you know how you got brown eyes, right? And you're like, I can't change my brown eyes, right? And I would go, well, you know, you could get contact, you know, the world's a little interesting, but you know, but, but yes, those are your brown eyes, right? The way we relate to that inner dialogue in our head is like it's brown eyes and it's not right? We have choice. We have power. We have to, you know, we have to manage that voice in our head or the voices in our head. And I swear to Jesus, no one thinks that they can or that it's their job or that's actually control central, right? Like anything not working in your life, you should go into that voices and you're, you know, go right in, right? Cause guess who's in charge of those voices? Oh, oh, you're just a victim of those voices. Yeah. That's B S. Right. That's like, come on, pussycat. Right. You don't leave the boogies in your nose like they're sacred up there. Right. You blow them out. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. So if once we realize that it's we need to address like we need to address like we can make changes in our life, it's time to take action. What can we do or, or is, there, is there any action steps that we can to, to change? Yeah. That? Lord knows for the 20 years I've been developing, like literally engineering tools to make us so much smarter, give us language so that I am teaching you to fish, not, you know what I mean? Right? Like here's a pole. Here's, here's the, where the river is. This is how this works out. Right? So the river is dreaming, right? Like that's what you want to be working on first and foremost. The reason we really don't dream is because then you understand if someone commits to wanting to run the marathon, that gets them out of bed every morning. Like that tells you exactly what you have to do. So if we never dream, then we never have to commit. If we never chase down that voice in our head that we have power to really change, right? And you're this person going, I would never run a marathon. And I'm like, but would you be rocked if you did? And you're like, wow, that's a really interesting gap. Like I, what would happen if I was the person that actually did that? Like what would happen in my whole life? Right. So that's kind of where we begin, right? Like human ability to change is, is so much easier, except you'd have to break into those voices in your head. And so the, the handle method is a step by step process leading you to taking over designing your life and your actions so that you actually get what you want versus just keep proving the world is the way it is and you're stuck in it the way you are. And you think it's scary or too challenging for people? Like, why don't they take action? Like, for for us in the fitness world, goals are loosely used and probably improperly for the most part. But so yeah. many people are afraid to set something out to go and achieve because there's the failure. Is that the yeah, yeah, yeah. similar to what you're? Uh, can you hear? So you know the seven deadly sins, right? laziness, like a, a type of don't believe in yourself, right? And then, and then punish yourself because, you know, like feel terrible about it. Like self-loathing comes in, like as if that is a fair compensation. Like I don't do what I wish I would do. And then I hate myself and, and my little voice in my head is so mean. So as if that's a balance of, of I'm intelligent, I understand something's wrong with me, but I can't change. So you don't get that you're the you're the victim and the perp in that head of yours, 
right? And so that's where I go to work, right? But does that sound easy? Um, the truth is, is that it's actually easy. That do you want to give up? Get do you want to get out of bed? Do you understand? There's some vice cooking, right? Like there's some crack cooking in the back, right? That every like there like if you go for a run, you're not sleeping in bed. If you sleep with your wife, you know, for four nights a week, right? That's like a lot of attention and love, and <laughs> like that's like a lot of commitment over there. It may just take 25 minutes, right? But for, for some reason, that level of intimacy and vulnerability is like, if it is the opposite of what we're looking for. So we, we're not, and I call all of that, like that whole section of why we don't do things, the dark side. <laughs> <laughs> you got me speechless. Here. Why is that? So why is that the dark side? Because we don't want to go over there and we don't want to put in that effort to change our circumstances. Um, let's see. Would you rather eat an app? or a cookie, right? Would you rather watch Netflix or go for a run or sleep with your wife? Like, right. So they're, they're all of a sudden, when you start to ask the human what it would rather do, what it would, what it would rather do, right? It would, it, it's a little upsetting when our answer is lazy, cookie, uh, snooze, um, don't ask for the promotion. Don't go to the, your, like, don't do what it takes to blow yourself away and be proud of yourself. Do the least amount you have to do to get away with being okay with yourself. Now that's not everybody. There are real overachievers, right? But then there's real areas in their life that they leave for dead, right? And so it's only for the areas that you're underachieving and you're telling a really interesting, sad story or no story at all. Right. You're just like, I'm not good at that. Right. I'm not good at intimacy. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> I think that that story, like we mentioned, you mentioned earlier from childhood. I think those stories, they come from childhood. Right. Like, yes, we've heard that from an early age. It could be from a parent. It could be from a mentor. Like, I'm not good in math. That's something that I say to myself. <laughs> but then I don't go in and do something about it. I go take a math class. Like, I could probably benefit from a grade four math class. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But that's uh, a story we continually repeat, whether it's I'm overweight, yes. I'm lazy. And then the thing you have to realize is the reason is your relationship to being lame, a little lame at math, connected all to your ability to feel prowess with money, right? Is math money? Because like, so then you would, you would just make sure it wasn't one area wasn't screwing with another. Right. And, right. and would they be, con would, would most areas be connected somewhere else? I would imagine. It's such a bummer. Yes. 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 Connect the dots. You have all, you are a bunch of dots. <laughs> okay. All connected. And they are truly all connected, which is brilliant, right? Which is if you clear up one thing, it changes everything, right? So there's a lot of leverage in that. But if you don't clear it up, it poisons everything, right? And then that just continues to weigh you down in, in different areas of your life, which is, an issue if you want to improve or achieve at a different level. Completely. Right. So it, we are that we are an ecosystem of all these areas of our lives and the way we relate to one of them impacts all of them. Right. Of course it does. Are there areas of life we should look at first or does it matter? Oh, you know, your pain, but um, <laughs> it's usually in money, career, love, body, family. Right. And, and then, it, and then, it, you know, is it any kind of order. Or is that just randomly issues that we all deal with at some level? It, there really are the top ones that are, are making a person unhappy, right? And it's their body, it's their love life, or it's their career and finances, right? Like those are the most important areas that we measure ourselves by happiness. Family's right there, but many people can live with lame relationships, friendships. Like if you start to really wonder about the quality of a great life, um, a person doesn't even realize that they are lonely because they don't have enough friends and they don't know how to make like really great relationships. Right. So, so there's many ways that a person would throw an area off. Like, oh, I don't seem to care about that, but they don't realize how much leverage they have. If they got two new friends that it would change their happiness level and their dating. Right. So, so people don't understand how much they're all connected and can feed each other, but they're usually are the four that people come for coaching for. <laughs> okay. So when we look at, let's look at relationships, relationships yeah. here specifically. And you've mentioned the relationships with your spouse, 
friendship. I think I just had this conversation the other day. Sometimes it feels like you have to always reach out to your friend, for example, like maybe you're always yeah. reaching out to your friend or friends or you never hear from them. I think yes. it's, it, I also think it's very challenging to continue to make new relationships and build friends. Like we have friends that maybe they're more acquaintances now, but friends that we grew up with or friends yeah. that we've always had, but going out to make new friends or developing yeah. new relationships. Yeah. Why is that a challenge and, and, and what can we do about it? Well, first of all, we don't admit straight, like, hi, I am looking for making new, better relationships and friendships. Are you like packed with friends and don't need any new ones? Or do you actually want some friends too? Like, where are you at with your community? Right? <laughs> like, seriously, it, like, that's what you would say to express yeah. to someone? I, I literally met a man on a plane who's an awesome man on a, like, we got stuck getting off the plane and on eight hours we got stuck together and I'm like, Oh my God, you are so interesting. You built an amazing business. I'm a nosy. <laughs> I'll ask, right. I am nosy. And if I like you, I'm going to keep you. Right. Right. So, um, how do you feel about that? And do you have enough, like, where are you at? Like leave you alone or I'm totally interested in what you do too. But would they right? tell you? Would they be oh my God. You? I, we have literally, we have our, a breakfast date this coming week, you know, met two weeks ago, have a breakfast date this coming week because it was profound. Right. And he, we had an eight, who gets eight hours with someone to get to know them because you got locked in an airport. Right. So I turned it into the, the best time and great business future. Like it was amazing. Right. But we really know each other now. Right. I love the guy. Right. I'm keeping him. <laughs> right. But, but I asked straight. And I want to be able to, and I also, you know, want someone to look me straight in the eye, you know, and tell me the truth. And I can tell in a second if you're willing to. So if you hear that, it's very intimate, very vulnerable and very one to one, right? Like I'm me, I'm not playing any games and I call you to be, I call you into the same relationship with me, right? And most people will not be that vulnerable and honest ever when it comes to sex, when it comes to a job, when it comes, when it comes to anything, right? But that's where the secret sauce of leaders comes from, right? Like the leader is the one who will be as straight as they can in the moment. And, and you just, and how do you expect that in return? You just open yourself up, be, be vulnerable and hope that you get that in return. I think I get away with a lot cause I'm a little cute and use my cute and fun and <laughs> Right. Like a little sugar with my Spice. hammer, <laughs> a little sugar with my, ha it's a very smooth handle. Right. Oh, did I just, I even made a handle joke. Okay. So, um, <laughs> terrible, but so I get away with, you know, I call it when I teach it in the, actually in the handle method, I teach it that in every good sentence, there's grace. Would you please? And then the command part, like the wisdom part, pass me the salt. Right. So I'm looking for friends like, oh, my God, you look great. How's your life? How are your relationships? Are you looking for more friends? Are you looking for a wife? Are you look, like, what are you looking for? Right. I have girlfriends. I have that. Right. So people don't share their community, walk in and open their their life up. Right. And in the new reality I would invent for humanity, you know, that would be 101 because it's actually what everybody's interested in. And you don't think that that approach is, would be too forward for some people. <laughs> you think I'm being a little New York for people? Um, I love New York, but New Yorkers are a bit, you know, yes. you know what the thing is about, I've always had, I, we go there every year. I love New York. And, <laughs> and I think New Yorkers get a, a bad reputation for being, uh, I would say from the outside, I would say rude or abrupt. And, but Don't forget aggressive. Aggr aggressive is probably... <laughs> <laughs> all put together with with rude and abrupt, but I, I really like New Yorkers because when you go when you go there and you have a question, they'll tell you the question. If you if they want if they want to express something to you, they're going to express it to you. And they don't like in up here in Canada, we're super nice, probably way too oh. nice. And, oh, and then but I I, I enjoy the attitude. I think it just gets it's just misconceived that that people in New York are rude, but they're just telling you straight like that. that they're just going to tell I, you, and I, I love yeah. that. You know how there's like the opposite zodiac signs? I think New York and Canada are <laughs> opposite zodiac signs. Like, wow, we could not be more different because you have an obligation to be kind and generous and nice no matter what. 
<laughs> right? And and New Yorkers have a job to be honest and brutally accountable. Like, <laughs> I know the answer. <laughs> it doesn't even matter if I've ever heard the subject before. Yeah. Right? So it's like the, the funny opposites. Yes. Um so, so I, think I, of Canada I, for except for, for yeah. example, like in would they like or, or someone that has that story, like your story, New Yorkers, that story, that upbringing is f- forward. That's our way of life, and then you have a more passive yeah. way of life. How would you? How I, you... I would, I would never teach passive, right? So I would go if you want a more passive appreciation for life, right? That's way more Buddhist than I'm teaching. Okay, so it's just a different mindset or a different process to how you go about going what you're looking. For. I am. I am teaching people to accomplish as much as they want in this life before they die. And that that list of dreams and desires is what we're here for and being able to get it in the way you want to get it, not in Lauren's version, but in your version really takes design and a willingness to chase and tell the truth. Above all else, tell the truth. Right. Am I accusing a level of niceness? So I think there is a level of kindness and niceness that can't tell the truth, right? So you meet someone, you're told, you know, one of my, watch this, okay? David and I, my cute husband and I went shopping for chairs on Craigslist. I don't know if you know what that is, but we went shopping for chairs on, at Craigslist and we end up at these people's houses and we drive up their house and um, it's a it's like an amazing 1700s, really well done. Like this is exactly what we think is so cool, right? Like we want in the house, right? We're just like, oh, right? So we pull up, but we're just coming for the chairs, right? And then we see the couple, right? And they're dry. We're in the middle of driving a Prius. They have a Prius and my husband and him have the same exact glasses on. And the woman <laughs> it comes like, they look alike, right? And the woman comes bopping down, right? With like big bouquet of flowers to come say hello to us, right? Just because she was picking in her garden. And, and I was like, David, can we keep them? Right. I like make a joke right there, right? They're stunning filmmakers, you know, nominated for like one Sundance, right? For their documentaries. I mean, they are the coolest. Like I literally didn't care about the chairs and we have been friends now for seven years. And I literally went home and sent them a, an email. Like, I know this is really strange, but you guys are amazing. And it's, it's not so easy to find amazing people that I'm blown away by that I would want to know just as friends want to do dinner, right? Guess what? They were like, I can't believe you wrote this. This is so amazing. We were like, we, we loved you too. And please come up. And then that was it. Right. So if, if I think those moments are risks that everyone should be taking, ready, ready, everyone, every day, this world is amazing. If you know your dreams and what you're looking for in each of your categories, that's in friendship for me. I believe in curating and meeting the greatest people on earth and, and giving to each other and sharing. I have a party twice a year where I bring everyone who should meet each other. <laughs> You're always a pleasure. So thank you so uh, much for coming on. Bring me back. Bring me back. Yeah. Go Canada. <laughs> yeah, you're always <laughs> welcome back. Thank you. Have a good day, Lauren. Bye. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this edition of Exploring Mind and Body. Once again, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for tuning in and being a part of our True Form Life community. You can always find us on Facebook.com slash True Form Life. We post stuff there a couple times a day on our story. We're always trying to bring you more content around living a healthy lifestyle, whether that be nutrition, fitness, lifestyle, and more. We also have free challenges that we do at least once a month. So if you follow us along there, you'll be able to join maybe a plank challenge or a squat challenge, Tabata challenge whatever it may be we'd love to have you join us we're also on instagram.com slash drew tadia again we're posting up there a couple times a day along with our story all dedicated to keeping you fit and healthy and on track our main website is trueformlife.com if you want to check out some of our products some of our services or if you just want some great content from videos to blog posts and recipes and more we got all that at trueformlife.com once again thank you so much for being here that's it that's all i got i'm out of here as always i'm your host drew tadia in health and fitness for a better world thanks for listening 
You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form Life's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. To find out more about the show, Drew Tadia, or to listen to past shows, visit exploringmindandbody.com.